What it is, y'all? It's your boy Jones, and welcome to another episode of Jones of the Sports Podcast. And today, there's only one person I could bring to the podcast to talk about this topic, and that is the drama that's going on in the MLB. And y'all already know the best man to talk to about yeah. this is my guy Luke. Luke, what's up, man? It's a sad day for my game, Sean. Uh, it, it really is, and that's why I had to have you come on, man, because uh, I, I'm not the biggest baseball fan, but I am a fan, and whenever I see that the sport is being paused or there's bullshit going on during <laughs> it, I got to find out what's going on, and you're, you're the guy to go to. So, well, you um, know, it's funny. There's, all, there's always bullshit with MLB. Let, let me preface every, any question you're about to ask me by saying that the MLB – Pretty much since Rob Manfred has taken over as commissioner, has been full of nothing but bullshit. Yeah. In terms of things like competitive balance, in terms of things like the luxury tax, and making the small market teams that typically don't do that well, they don't spend any goddamn money. Right. AKA players are trying to fix. They don't want to fix. Right. Exactly. I hear that. One hundred percent. Um. So basically. Uh, we want you to break down what's going on to our fans out there that know what's going on and those that don't know what's going on. Um, yeah, just break, basically break down what's what was the importance of yesterday because yesterday was a big date that didn't get met, and now that's why we're really into the place that we are now in the MLB. So break that down for us. What is going on in the MLB and why is there a problem? Okay, so just like any other sport, obviously collective bargaining agreements between the league, which is the owners and the commissioner and the players. And you see it in the NBA, you see it in the NHL, you see it in the MLS, you see it in any professional sport. The problem here is that baseball is a very unique entity in that there's a couple unique things like no salary cap. That's something like the NBA or, you know, the NHL or even the NFL have and it's become an institution within the game um a couple things like you know anyone who who's watched any episode that me and sean have done on baseball over the years he's a met fan i'm a yankee fan what does that tell you two separate leagues baseball is the only league i can think of where there's separate rules between the anl and the al yep or at least there was until this round of bargaining came into play which both sides pretty pretty quickly agreed to getting uh, getting rid of pitchers hitting because mm. across the league I think pit, I think the pitchers averages were below 150 lead, like oh, right. lead wide and okay. the league where I mean look at look at a sport just for example like you know the NFL is a high powered offense fast high scoring like kind of like you know early 2000s Madden style of play where it's just quick. Yeah, you know, downfield like five plays and there's your touchdowns. Yeah. Baseball's the opposite. There's great games that are one nothing, but you got to be a real baseball fan to love those games. 100%. Like if you ask a football fan, what's the worst possible game for them? A six three game in the mud, Mike yeah. Bill. So baseball fans are very unique. We're very different. We don't we don't seek action. We seek strategy. Now with that. <laughs> what else makes our game unique is that we have the dumbest commissioner by far. It's not close. Yes, that's, that's very so have what I would call the greediest owners, which might come yeah. to a bit of a shock because one thing that baseball owners love is to cry poverty. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, they don't want to do anything that will grow the game. Like, I'm the first person to shit on the NBA. But to the NBA's credit, there's never been a problem between the owners and the players because everyone's making money. Yep. <laughs> the league has all the attention, and they love it. Yep. Even Lakers right now, who can't seem to win a goddamn game, at least it's publicity. People know what's going on with the Lakers. If I yep. go to the average fan and be like, can you tell me anything about the Pittsburgh Pirates? They'd say no. <laughs> Right. No one knows. No one like I'm 30. You just turned 30, correct? 31. How do I forgot you're older than me? Either way, <laughs> people my age are the fans who, when I was three, got robbed of baseball in 1994 by the old commissioner's office, 
And if you say the year 1994 in the city of Montreal, I wouldn't be shocked if people start crying because yeah. that was the Expos got robbed of for their Gross. best team they've ever had. Yep, absolutely. So this that was the year of, world, they they took away the World Series, correct? Yeah, they but that well, they stopped the season in the middle of the season. It wasn't like right. it never got off the ground. It was running and then just came to a screeching halt. That's crazy. And 1994 has also been a benchmark in how these contracts have been negotiated. It's also been, I'm going to call the powder keg that has caused the union and the league to hate each other Mm. ever since. There's like, again, when you hear about there being a collective bargaining issue between the NBA and the owners, you don't, it doesn't get dragged out. It's very right. quick, it's very cordial. It's very like, it's very transparent in that both sides know what they want and they seem, you know, committed to some sort of compromise and they don't, it doesn't drag. It doesn't, you're right. It just doesn't. And I've, oh, that's been like, I've always, again, I'm a big critic of the NBA, but Adam Silver deserves all the flowers for helping keep that league you know, on a trajectory where it's all growth, no animosity. Yeah. Those two sides, regardless of sport, have to be in complete synchronicity. And baseball has never been at a more difficult crossroads between the league and the players. Right. Right. Um, that's, that's a lot that yeah. they've all got to get together. All right. My question to you now is, what do you think needs to be done in order for this to be fixed? Well, they, a lot of the issues that were on the table have been fixed. The universal DH will be a thing starting this year. The pitchers will no longer hit. Frankly, as an American league fan, that's better for the game. There's national league purists that hate that. Sorry. Y'all are in your, y'all are like 70 by now, like kick rocks. Um, there's things um, – and there was a competitive balance issue, for example, right. where teams like Baltimore, uh, Pittsburgh uh, – what's, like, what's another good example? Uh, like the Marlins right. um, were typically – or even Colorado. Those types of teams that are like not perennial bottom dwellers, but teams that really don't put any effort to be good – um, or improve by way of like signing free agents. Right. That was a big problem. Because baseball, again, is not a lottery sport. Baseball is a worst to first in terms of record to draft. Mm. So, you, so you would see teams like Baltimore, Pittsburgh, like case in point, the number one pick in the last draft is from our hometown. He went to Fox Lane and he's – you know, he got his signing bonus, but I would argue that's the, that's the most money the Pirates threw around all year. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> Prior to the, oh, at least when the old CBA was still in effect. Um, so wow. the, the union wanted to fix tanking, you know, whether it be implementation of a salary floor, um, or, you know, as opposed to a, you know, like a cap of sort. It's like the opposite of, it's like reverse engineering what, what competent sports do right <laughs> uh, which i like because there's no incentive so like just i uh, i told you i pulled up some infos um each team there's a there's a there's a revenue sharing system mm-hmm. for the teams which is based on you know tv both regionally and national and the players want a bigger cut of that money right Completely reasonable. Absolutely. Right. I mean, without them, there is, there's nothing to put on TV. Exactly. So just for the sake of um, – let's, let's, just, let's just put it like this. The Miami Marlins in 2020 – and again, 2020, grain of salt, COVID year, whatever – in a COVID season, the Marlins still made ninety-six million dollars. That's wild. Ninety-six. Remember that number. Yep. Because what I am now going to look up, and I'm in the process of looking up, 
is payroll. Okay. And it, this is the source of a lot of contention. Okay. So let's see. Miami's payroll last year, fifty-five million. Huh. And wow. they were and they were not the lowest. There's three teams below them, specifically Pittsburgh, Baltimore, and Cleveland, all of whom paid under thirty-five. Wow. But wow. everyone made ninety minimum. This is the type of thing that gets players furious. Absolutely. I would be too. Right. See how uh, you as a, as a quote unquote casual baseball fan get like emotionally jarred by this. Yes. Any fan, any logical human should react to how the players are getting fucked in the same way that, yo, you right now, you'd be like supporting the Ukraine. You support the players. Right. Like that's an obvious this is just obvious. Exactly. Um, and yeah, along with that, uh, the other thing I'd seen was that, um, and this is just a quote that I saw from an article written yesterday by NBCChicago.com, just to give them their credit. Mm-hmm. Uh, MLB and the union have so far made progress on a draft lottery, so therefore they're trying to fix that tanking problem. And mm-hmm. there is optimism around a potential agreement on the issue, yada, yada. The two sides have uh, work to do, yada, yada, including a luxury tax and a minimum player salary, which last year I believe was 560000 for a day one major leaguer, which, again, seems like it, uh, not a bad number, but in Aaron Judge's rookie year in 2017, he was second in MVP to a right. caught beating Jose Altuve in the MVP. So – a lot of that argument is you could make 560000 the next year, you're not going to get a raise. The owners have yep. you for nothing. Right. I but Judge, it. meanwhile, at arbitration, could be getting $8 million. Mm-hmm. So I they're trying that. to add some money in there. And the other yeah. thing that the players are looking to do is they're asking for uh, a raise in the luxury tax threshold, which, again, for teams like the Dodgers or your beloved Mets, Mm-hmm. who've been spending a lot of money. There's a certain number. It's, I, it's in the low 200 millions as of last, the old CBA, where if you spend above that money, you get taxed 40% of your payroll. Mm. Right. That is how yeah. baseball has a salary cap. The problem is teams like the Dodgers said, fuck your salary cap. Exactly. And in the playoffs, easily for the last 10 years your yep. owner your owner uncle stevie yeah literally told the fans don't ever worry about the threshold i got you. right it's the point and y'all were the only ones signing players yep <laughs> that's wow that is definitely uh, what the pl- now what the players want is a you know they want to raise to the threshold they have yeah. asked for $245 million, rising to $273 uh, in the last year of this would-be collective bargaining contract. Mm. The owners have countered with $210. Damn. I'm sorry, 210 to $214, increasing to $220. Wow. They just, they're not trying to budge. Hmm. Yeah, and then uh, when you have guys like the commissioner, who I didn't bother to watch his uh, press conference earlier because I didn't want to throw my phone through a window. <laughs> um, when you have guys like that who are, you know, saying, "Oh, we did what we could." They're they're trying to. It, I'm just gonna say this: what the owners, the, the the way that the owners are trying to gaslight these players and kind of use like prop like militarize the propaganda quote unquote very mm-hmm. similar to what Russia's trying to do to the Ukraine. I know that's like a weird comparison right. but in in terms of trying to spin the narrative it's exactly right. it's it's a weird parallel. Man. Yeah, yeah, I mean it sucks. I mean the players yep. the players don't get me wrong, the players <laughs> will find a way to get this done. The problem is and this is another insider not even insider, but a kind of in the know thing. 
The owners don't give a fuck about the month of April. They never have. Okay. Why? Most cities, like, okay, you go to opening day for the Mets every year at City Field, right? Yep. What's the what's usually the one common denominator about opening day at City Field? Um, as far as what? Aside from the team on the field, what's the usual constant at City Field? It's packed. <laughs> it's usually fucking cold. Okay, I definitely, definitely. People don't show up to outdoor games usually until Memorial Day and or whenever their school district is off for summer break. You yeah. make money with families. You don't get that until May. That's true. Unless you have a dome, and even then, if you're the Yankees and you charge $8 for Coca-Cola, you're not – no, <laughs> this doesn't work. Yeah. No, that's definitely true because it's fucking always called – Right, first. no one goes to games. People will go to L.A., San Diego. There's a reason the Yankees were supposed to open in Texas and Houston in, – in Dallas and Houston. Right. Those are now canceled. Which I feel bad because, you know, Texas needed a good draw. And not for nothing, Yankees Astros is always a TV draw. Yeah, always. For sure. It doesn't matter what building it's in. Granted, right. we get we get them to come to the Bronx later in the year, assuming they get a deal done. Right. But like imagine the outcry if, you know, like imagine if the NFL was not gonna contemplate changing the overtime rule. After the Bills got fucked. Yeah, Imagine yeah. if uh, they were going to promise to change, you know, the definition of a catch after the Des Bryant incident and then never did. Yeah. And yeah. blame the players for them not doing anything. Right. Right. There would be That's a awesome. insane outcry. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's yeah. MLB is, is bugging out with that. Now, would I love to tell you that I have the emotional stability to tell the owners I won't watch your games this year? No. Right. I'm a bitch. I will watch the Yankees when they come back. Right. I will watch baseball when it comes back. Absolutely. Here's what I don't ex- – here's what I do expect. If you live fairly close to Yankee Stadium, yes, right, I, do. yep. I don't expect you to see a lot of people on 161st anytime soon. I don't expect the Pac-7 train going to see Scherzer the first time he takes the mound. <laughs> I, don't, yeah, no. I, don't, I don't expect a lot of merch sales. No, that makes I mean, sense. Right. I mean, there's a, we as fans have the ability to tell the owners, like, we're not happy. Right, exactly. And it's, it's you know, you're going to have to wait until, you know, until <laughs> – until that, you know, they get their shit together. But until that happens, I mean, Twitter doesn't do shit. Yeah, Steve right. Cohen's the only owner I've ever seen who's ever on Twitter. Yep. <laughs> so, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's just annoying. Like this, this is this is. Uh, imagine if basketball and football got taken from you. Oh yeah, I remember those times, those days. It's it's happened before, a long time ago. But I'm glad we're not dealing with that right now. Right. I mean, even hockey fans, they had a yeah. lockout ever yep. since the game has been thriving. Absolutely. Exactly. That's exactly. all you hope for is just a resolution to the current conflict and then yep. improving, you know, thereafter on good labor practices and operating ethically. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. what they, they got to progress. Um, last question I got for you. Hey, God. When do you see this? Um, when do you see this being resolved? And if you do, when and when it does get resolved, will it continue? Will like you like you just mentioned, uh, NHL, MLB, I'm mean, not MLB, NBA, NFL. After they've gone through their lockouts, the game has gotten better. We saw it, like yep. you said. Do you think that this time with the MLB, it will get better? Because we've seen you the MLB go through this before, and it's still not get better. Yeah, here's my concern. MLB peaked in 1998 uh, in our generation during the McGuire-Sosa home run chase. Yeah. What 
indicative on the Hall of Fame voting, the writers and the people who bring baseball to the masses don't want to acknowledge how good that period was or else they would have put Barry Bonds in the Hall of Fame 10 fucking years ago. Yep. My what will be the catalyst for change, in my opinion, with baseball will be the day within I'm calling the next five years. MLS outdraws baseball in terms of physical attendance and TV viewership. Oh, shit. You think it's going to go downhill? Well, let me put it to you like this, Sean. I didn't have shit else to watch on Sunday, so I watched City FC lose to the Galaxy 1-0. Oh, shit. Damn, yeah. that's, that's, that's it's sad to see that MLB is Well, going I'm also play. a degenerate fucking gambler, so I had money on City. <laughs> so it serves me right. But MLS is growing. This is Charlotte <laughs> FC's inaugural city. Every year they've been putting teams in. Nashville was last year. Cincinnati the year prior. City FC was within the last five, six years. That yeah. league is growing the fastest than any other sport is in this country, and it's not even close. Yeah, absolutely. For wow. what, it's, I mean, what more of a wake-up call do you need? If, 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 you know, a first-place Dodgers team in the middle of July can't draw – 75 80 percent capacity on a friday night nine yeah, years old. yeah that's definitely bad definitely right bad. or even the small market beloved teams that are thriving like milwaukee they're yep. gonna be good if they're not yep. drawing 75 80 percent on weekends you got a problem if teams like the oh, cardinals that are that are tried and true with solid legit fan bases are not drawing the fans are telling you to go fuck yourself and i yeah. hope they do for sure. Uh-huh. sure. Um, this is actually my last question because this is going to hit home for you a little bit. <laughs> Great. Derek Jeter, uh-huh. stepping down. your thoughts on your one of your favorite baseball players ever. What are your thoughts on him stepping down? And do you think this is a sign for something else? Or, and do you think it's because of what's going on right now in the MLB? Well, Jeter said that he left due to um, – like philosophical differences between him and uh, the other members of the ownership group. And I'm sure president of baseball ops, the GM pretty much Miami was just a situation where too many chefs in the kitchen. I think Um, kudos to them for bringing in. uh, I forget her name. I think it's like Kim Ng, uh, NG, uh, the GM, but she's been doing, a lot of good for that team, like sneaky good moves, scouting, like player development has all been doing pretty well. Um, I don't think Derek Jeter had much to do with that. Mm. Like, I think Derek Jeter was not the kind of guy, never strike me as such, who would just buy in ownership and then let it kind of run itself. Right, exactly. Exactly. Like, when have you ever heard of the my, one of the minority owners calling shots? It just it doesn't happen unless the group appoints you to that role. Exactly. Um, I don't. I'm not going to tell Derek Jeter to go away. He's a baseball guy. Baseball guys should be in baseball. Um, I I just I think the only team, frankly, that'll have any business working with him is the Yankees. It's only knows. Yeah. It's the only one that's going next. Is it, do we are we going to see a reunion? And even then, if I'm the Yankees, no offense to Jeter, um, I would rather bring in a, a guy like CC Sabathia, mm. for example, who I think sees the game through like more of like the younger like what if positive outlook lens, right? Um, and who's also been doing like actively doing good, you know, charitable work you right. know, with RBI, like, you know, spreading the game inner city, like Jeter hasn't done any of that shit. <laughs> and it's, it's, again, it's weird for me to kind of shit on Jeter, but like, hey, it is what it is. It's real. By comparison, I mean, Yankee fans will always love Jeter. Oh, of just in, in, in terms of relevancy, <laughs> CC's more in the public eye. Jeter yeah. has always been the type to lay low. Yes, he has. That's Either true. Way that, he's playing. Yeah. 
Like, you know, I'm not going to knock him for being true to form. It's just like, what do you expect? Wow. But all of a sudden, like, you know, Patrick Mahomes is a minority owner in the Kansas City Royals. You don't yeah. see him bitching in the offseason about, you know, why didn't we sign fucking Corey Seager? Yeah, exactly. He just, he just shuts up and collects his check and then reads his playbook. Yep. Right. Very cool. Know your role. That's all I'm saying. Know your fucking role. Uncle Steve, he wanted to stay in the Mets, so he bought the fucking team. Yep. Whole, the whole thing. Not yep. a part. He bought the entire yep. fucking thing. Yep. That's how you do it. That yeah, is how you honestly. Do it. Look what Jerry Jones did. Same exact yep. thing back in the day. You want, you want control? Buy the whole fucking thing. Wow, no one's going to tell you shit. They can't. Here's yeah. 100%. I 100% agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on as far as the MLBs goes? I mean, I'm, I'd give it probably another two weeks. I think they're close enough where striking distance is a real thing. Okay. Um, I could, I could see, I could see the union taking probably two, three days minimum, kind of figuring out how to counterattack. If if they, if the owners are not going to budge, or maybe they'll they'll settle at a cap of two twenty, two twenty five. On the luxury tax, I could see, I could see the players maybe wanting more of a more of a salary floor, like a hard floor, which I think is, right. you know, not if you want to say maybe two thirds of your yearly revenue, which mm-hmm. I think would also be good for fans because Atlanta, the the Atlanta Braves revenue was leaked last year, or I'm sorry, it was leaked a couple of weeks ago about all every dime they made last year. Um, no owner can cry poor. Right. I'm sorry, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> it's just it's not it's possible. It's not. It's not. Yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah. If you want to, and the, the, you know, if you're the Orioles, right? You don't want to. You don't want to keep sucking every year. Exactly. If you're the Pirates, you know, there's a reason the Pirates have the most beautiful stadium in professional sports. I'm talking worldwide, and no one shows up. Meanwhile, the team next door, for example, spends the money, will do what they have to do to maintain competitive balance, and they sell out every fucking game. Yep. Like, a little bit of introspective looking here is not going to hurt anybody. Nope, not at all. Yeah. Well, thank you, Luke, for having, having coming on the show and talking to us about what's going on in the MLB because I know a lot of MLB fans – are upset about what's going on and they just want everything to be fixed so that we can get baseball back yeah. when it's ready. To at, least, at least the show's coming out on time. Right. Exactly. At least we, you can still play with the sticks on video games and stuff like that, but we'll see what's going on um, in the next few weeks. And obviously we'll have Luke back on here to update us on what's going on and stay, stay locked in with that. So appreciate you, Luke. Uh, you guys, no problem at all. Say, say again. I say, no problem at all. I, you know, I don't mind jumping on when I can. I got a hell of a lot busier. Absolutely, yeah, we definitely have. Um, but yeah, so you guys know what to do. Make sure you subscribe, you like, you comment, and you comment, and you know, just have fun with it. You guys know what time it is. It's your boy Jones, Jones of the Sports. We make sports better. Peace.